So hang up your stockings, put the tinsel on the tree, because Christmas is coming, my dear. What's happening, Free Gang? We're coming to you live, but not live. From our front room in London. The reason Bob's not starting the video is because he's shaving at the moment. He's got himself into a spot of bother. I said to him, you need to have a shave, right? Because he was looking a bit scruffy. And then he went to have a shave and hit the razor ran out of power halfway through the shave. So he's got... <laughs> he's got half a face shaved and the other half... <laughs> hairy. So yeah, he's trying, he's got himself into a spot of bother, but he's trying to sort it out in time for us to go out because we are actually trying to head out the door because where are we going to do today, Jojo? Today's a very special day. We've waited about, well, I mean, you've waited about 10 years for this. 10 years, about 10, has it been 10 years, Bob? 11 years to be exact, actually. I'm all done! <laughs> yeah, it's been about 10 years, well, 10 years in the making for the people who made the film. For us, we only found out about two years ago, so two years in the waiting. <laughs> yes, because we are going to the cinema to see Avatar, the second Avatar film, and we are big fans of Avatar. Today, we are going for the full cinema experience. We, we are taking snacks, I'm taking blankets. We, we paid extra for the best seats. Yeah, we've got to get some popcorn. We've got to get popcorn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. everything. Full and cinema it's experience. It's not only 3D, but it's also IMAX as well. Oh my god, that is the full cinema experience. But we are running out of time to get this experience, so we've got to head out the door. Come on, Frigo. Yeah, so, we're in town now to head in towards the cinema. Look at this one, fully prepared with blankets. Look at the socks. I've got my, I've got my old trainers on, my cup trainers and socks. And I've got um, slippers in the bag as well. This is the full cinema experience. It requires these things, of course. We're quite lucky as well, where we've parked, there's a valeting service and I don't know if we told you this when we went up to North Wales, but our car, in the snow and all of that weather, got absolutely covered in dirt and it needed a clean. The guy saw it and he was like, whoa! He said one million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're inside now. So we're going to grab some popcorn because that of course is the full cinema experience. Oh, we've just walked into the heat as well. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, nice. That's why we came in and we thought it's just as cold as outside, but it's okay. So we're going to have to queue for some popcorn. Look, oh yeah. This is the one we're going to This is the one. Look at these dudes. They always do film posters looking very epic, no matter what it is. Yeah, they do. We've seen ones before, haven't we? Where it's for just basic sounding things. The staircase. It's like... We saw but they make it look like so intense. He's like, it's just a staircase. We said it, we saw it on the side of a bus and we were just like, what next? The washing machine. Yeah. And also, guess what I found out in the car park? It's Lego Wolverine mask piece. Cool, man. Yeah. I always get a bit concerned though when they see us vlogging, like they think we're gonna try and record the movie like they think we're yeah, gonna like be pirates or something and pirate the movie and then sell it to all our friends. Well, we haven't got eye patches or anything, have we? So we can't be pirates. We have been pirates for a day before and we, we don't look anything like we did then. That was a fun video. Please mm. check out that video if you haven't seen it. Um, <laughs> if we're talking about suggested videos, check out the one when we try to sneak into a cinema with loads of food stuff in our jackets and stuff. That was the, probably the funniest one ever. Funniest video ever. Anyway, we're running out of time. I feel like we need to divide forces. You go queue up for popcorn. I've got to collect the tickets from the machine. Okay, okay. Well, they've got JJ's stuff. Oh, wow. We're filling out with popcorn, yeah? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I thought we would just get here that. Well, I was her idea to get the other. Well, he can have that one to himself and we can share this one. I was thinking full cinema experience, this is great, but I think it's too cold for a vegan magnum. Yeah? Too cold. You have to stop you, I've got some bad news. I forgot to bring the 3D glasses because I know we had some from before. And obviously, what? we're watching this in 3D. Fortunately, they gave me three packs. <laughs> Are we all ready to go in then? Yeah. Come on, let's do this. We'll see you after free game. We just come out there, guys, and we got, we went past a homeless person. Jojo just went up to him on his own and said, is there anything I can get for you? Yeah, and he's and hungry, so we got some nice fresh bread. Yeah, we got some for catcher. Okay, what do you think of the movie, Jojo? Yeah, what do you it guys was, think? It was pretty good. It was very, very intense. Super intense. intense. Yeah, like as far as just appreciate the piece of art and creating that it's unbelievable never been done before motion capture underwater for so much of it but just like the story deeply emotional like really centered around family which really got me yeah yeah every time i watch those movies it makes me feel a stronger connection with our mother earth 
Yeah. Does it matter? Because they are so focused on that again and again, aren't they? They're always saying great mother and yeah. Yeah, just. But there's so many things that are very reflective of human society, isn't it? Like, there was like just such an overwhelming apathy from a, a large amount of humans, and then there's a small select few that have real respect and understand the balance. And yeah. Yeah. It makes you, it makes you really reflect. You come away and like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I recommend if you're into those films, definitely go and see that one because it is really, really good. Come and judge over guns, says. Not, yeah. not that we're doing a film review, just our opinions. <laughs> there are some battle scenes though, just if you're not a fan of things like that. I'm not really a fan of those kind of things, yeah. but I just love these types of movies, so I kind of just like... Yeah, there's a very central theme about them, isn't there? In the sense of like respect of Earth and everything, yeah. and the planet. Yeah. Just realised we were going upstairs and we're not parked up, so we're coming down again. You literally said we're going up the stairs. To be honest, I saw stairs going up and I didn't even think that's the only way. There's no down. There's no down, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> Let's just stick to the lift and buttons and labels that say what floor you're on. It's down please. I'll tell you what it's called for once we get home. It's a nice hot cup of tea, I'm right? It's cold. Even being out this little bit, it's so cold. So we're back home guys. We've uh, got warm, got cozy, had our tea, had our dinner. We've got our cozies on. Well, I have yeah, anyway. You've, you've got your cozy on. The reason we've decided to sit down and chat to you guys is because there is something that we mentioned in a recent Q&A video about a situation where we had what we would describe as our worst Christmas ever. And we asked you guys if you felt that you wanted to hear that story and you said yes, you did want to hear that story. We also said we had a story about the truth about Santa, but I'm not sure about that one yet because I don't yeah. want to get slated. I really don't want to get slated. Yeah. It's hard it's, to go into that one. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> hard for people not to judge us with that because we they don't know the journey we've been on. Yeah. But maybe it. there might be another video for that, maybe. But this one specifically is sharing a story with you about what we would describe as our worst Christmas ever. As a family, since we've been together. Yeah, I did have a lot of Christmases I was not fond of prior to meeting Katie. I actually, by the time I came to meeting you, I did not like Christmas. I I've had know. a good 10 years of just hating it. Yeah. But having a family... Your dad, can I tell them about your dad? I don't mean, have to go. I just had different experiences. My parents broke up, there always used to be arguments between them. My dad didn't really make much of an effort after they broke up. I'd come he, down, I even wrapped up my own present one year. I'd come down to him wrapping up presents. There'd be alcohol, there'd be arguments, all of these things. But yeah, so you, that's all in the past. And when I met you and we had the kids, I, I put all my heart and soul into enjoying it for that first Christmas, which we shared with you guys recently when we, uh, Shared, we shared it with the big kids yeah, as well. Yeah, we shared our home video of our first Christmas as a family and it was a bit of a bit of a tear jerk, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So check that out if you haven't seen that, guys. But that is a good place to start this story because obviously you know what our situation was about why we did that Christmas big, how much we enjoyed it. And so that Christmas is was in 2009. Me, Katie, Sam and Jamie. From that day onwards, we committed always to doing big Christmases. Yeah, and so the next year, 2010, we were doing it big by going on a two week trip to Florida, which we left on Boxing Day. Still doing a lot of presents here, but overall it was big. But it was the year after that is when things really, really changed. So 2011, Christmas then. At this point, we had a new addition to the family in the form of six month Jojo. But something had changed in a situation with Sam and Jamie's biological dad. He'd recently got with a girlfriend who had a child herself from a previous relationship. And they had one day come in from school because they'd been at their dad's the night before. Mm. And they came in from school and they said, oh, mummy, mummy, can we go to dad's for Christmas? You know, he's got this new girlfriend and she's got a kid and he's, and, and they promised them this wonderful Christmas. And we were just like, okay, sure. Because mm. I can't just expect them to be with me every time no. and i just thought it was only fair they wanted to go i just couldn't say no to them we and wanted to follow what they wanted if they felt that they were going to be happy doing that we didn't want to deny them that and yeah and they were promised so much from his new girlfriend you know she was saying oh it'll be amazing and everything mm. So we just said, yeah, okay, sure. I felt didn't feel happy about it, but I you just... You followed your kids' 
Yeah. The way you want them to be happy, and so you yeah. just try and do that best you can. And so when we woke up Christmas Day, the atmosphere here was very, very different. Obviously, we had baby Jojo. That was great. It's his first Christmas. But he didn't know it could have been any old day. And to be honest, it, it was probably a bit overwhelming for him because... You know, the room looked different and we're saying, oh, you know, open presents. And, and he, he always probably just cares about his grabbing, wrapping paper and yeah. rolling around in it. He just wanted to play with the paper, really. He, he, we well, he got him a cookie monster that yeah. ate cookies. Do you remember? Yeah, and it talked and sung. And he bounced. did sort of look at it for a little while and the, the cookie monster was like going on. So it was nice, but it just felt so different. Mm. And I've never, ever not had my kids with me on Christmas Day, ever. Even when we were homeless, they were with me on yeah. Christmas Day. So it was just like, oh, all those years of having, like, just, mm. and then them not being here just felt really empty. Because they're kind of, they, those two especially back then were the, like the life and soul of Christmas and the yeah. Christmas morning. We did the treasure hunt two years in a row up to that point. Mm. But then we had none because we weren't going to yeah. do it with Jojo. He had no idea. It made no difference to him. There was no big reveal or in the well, front room or anything like that it was just so different we just woke up with our baby like any other day didn't we yeah and i thought and i felt because it was jojo's first christmas we should have had them there with us and... yeah so for us that morning was very different we were obviously there enjoying it for jojo and that but obviously there was that something missing wasn't there yeah and, and i i thought i just i couldn't cook dinner i just i just couldn't do it i just didn't feel like doing no, it it wasn't like jojo, a regular day to do it was jojo it jojo was only having breast milk at the time yeah i didn't want to cook a dinner for just us two it just felt i just didn't want to cook a christmas dinner without my kids being there yeah it so, felt like it would have been just for the two of us yeah so we didn't know what to do about <laughs> eating we, and so yeah i don't know why but we, we ended up taking a drive. I don't know if we were Jojo to have a nap or something. We went and got a McDonald's takeaway and ate that for we, Christmas yeah, dinner. Yeah, we found a drive through It was like a 24 hours drive through McDonald's that was open on Christmas Day, basically. But we never used and to eat McDonald's much. I can't I know. think why we ended up going there. This wasn't exactly near to us. I know, I know. We just like <laughs> we, we must have been so, feeling that low. <laughs> well, we just, I think we just went to take Jojo out in the car for a nap. Yeah, and maybe we just, just yeah. yeah. And so yeah, we ended up having our Christmas dinner was McDonald's. Then we went round to your sister's in the evening just to get out of the house because we didn't want to be. Yeah, in I anymore. think they invited us round for like evening snacks and stuff. And I think it was one of them was like, "You went where?" And they were disgusted that we went to McDonald's and they were saying, why didn't you come here? You should have come here for dinner. Yeah, they were so they were just like outraged that we went there for Christmas dinner. They're like, how could you do that? It wasn't about that. We just didn't want to eat a Christmas dinner. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we could have cooked anything else simple. Yeah. Why we ended up doing that, I don't know. But that's not the end of the story. Yeah. So from our perspective, our experience of that Christmas day without Sam and Jamie, wasn't the happiest. We obviously enjoyed it as much as we can for Jojo, but it had that mm. big thing missing from but it. But it wasn't, I wouldn't say at that point it was the worst Christmas no. in the world, because it was just, uh, uh, we were just dealing with our emotions and dealing with, with it how we, you know, we still were able to eat, you know, we should be grateful yeah. we were still able to, to eat, you know. Yeah, I, of course we were grateful, we enjoyed it with Jojo, but it just felt weird. But like Katie said, that isn't the worst part of this story. It was the next day when Sam and Jamie came back from their dad's, and they shared with us what their Christmas day was like. They came in the door. Jamie was crying and Sam was just angry. And I was thinking, what has happened? And they just like started yelling, didn't they? It's like, it's like they'd been holding it in and then as soon as they got in the door, they wanted to like let it out. Yeah, they basically told us that they just had the worst Christmas ever. Basically, their dad's girlfriend's child was just given tons of presents. And they had a lot less, didn't they? They had one present each. Which one? They had one each, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, one each. And which, one, of course, they were <laughs> grateful for. Yeah, that, they, yeah, you know, they, uh, you I know. think it's the contrast though when but you see they, someone getting more. They like had this one present each, and then they just sat there for hours watching this other child just opening presents. And they were kids at the time. They were still kids who would have got toys and presents and lots of things that they'd enjoyed. Yeah. There was another thing that happened as well to do with the truth about Santa thing, but I won't go into that now. Yeah, that's another story. So yeah, they, they were just sat there for hours watching this other child who they didn't even know very well. Um, opening all all of these presents, they just sort of got past. They got past that. Yeah, I, I think it's just hard because we've always been conscious to make sure that 
each one of them have got the same amount of presents to open. If it's 5, 10, 15, we won't let one have 16 or 14 or yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, we get... To the point that we've gone, oh, that person's got one more, the other two, let's buy it. Yeah, we yeah. Do, I, do you know what? I've had a lot of heat in the comments about this as well, because a lot of people watch our Christmas Day videos, and so many people say, why do you get the older kids snacks? Because Sam gets a lot of snacks. He gets yeah. a good lot, he gets good presents as well, but... Um, the, the we, ratio is yeah. different like, compared to Joe. And I think what they, because they don't know us that well, what they don't realise is Sam's actually in his 20s. He earns good money. He, the things he does want, he buys himself, yeah. but he doesn't want for much. There's only so many times you can get him a pair of socks, you know? But I think it tends to happen in a lot of families once kids get into adulthood and they have their own job. Yeah. Presents from adults don't happen. It's, it's happened with our nieces and nephews yeah. who've got their own jobs and that as well. Yeah, it's different when they're older because they do get a bit less presents, but we do... we Because they want less as well. Yeah, but we do still try, and that's why we give Sam snacks, because he loves yeah. snacks, he does. Yeah. You still want them to have a lot to open, even if it's not yeah. the same amount as their you know, younger brother or sister. Because it's still fun, but that's not what his girlfriend did, and she just... I guess from a kid's perspective, it can make you feel not good enough if you think, why are they getting more than me? and there's no logical reason for it. Yeah. However, it wasn't just the presents which was the problem there. The girlfriend started loads of arguments on Christmas Day. Yeah. Which, in my, from my perspective, kind of unforgivable. Yeah. To a certain extent because, yeah. you know, Christmas Day is that day when you, you know, it's like the pinnacle of the year for family mm. like time really, isn't it? It's like you raise everything up, the happiness, the joy, the fun, the silliness. Yeah, and you just don't, don't argue on Christmas Day. Yeah, you put that yeah. stuff to the side if there is a problem. But, yeah, the kids said that... Over dinner, wasn't it? Arguing like about a recipe, a stuffing recipe and this thing and that thing. The presents thing was one thing, because they were grateful, they yeah. had one present, um, but I think it was just, they don't want to be around. Yeah, we'd never people. argue anyway, so they no. never even, they were never ever around that sort of environment. And the yeah. last time you want it is Christmas Day, you want everything perfect. Yeah, so I felt really, really guilty, the fact that I just said, yeah, you can go there. Mm. I was thinking, I, I, I always want my kids with me from now on, but I didn't have to say that. The kids said, we are never going elsewhere on Christmas Day, mm. they, and they never did. But it's all lessons, you know, these, yeah. all these things are lessons. Yeah, we wanted to do the best for the kids, didn't we? And yeah. they learned a lesson, it didn't work out how they hoped. And it made us always be even more conscious about Christmases. Yeah, I think Christmases. we just went even bigger the next year, didn't we? Well, we wanted to make up for that. Yeah, and it was nice as well, because it was the first one of us were together then, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, Jojo was be becoming a bit more aware. So he, he, I think I carried him around for the treasure hunt. So yeah, that was our worst Christmas, guys. We don't mean to put a downer on Christmas with it coming up, but yeah, you guys had asked about it, so we wanted to share it. And you know what, these ups and downs in life, good, bad times, it's all part of the journey. And sometimes this negative end of the spectrum gives us appreciation for the good things when they do come. But yeah, we we share these things because we're real, you know? We have, you know, we don't always get it right. Yeah, and we have poopy days. Yeah, and I do have to apologise to my kids sometimes, but it's, it's, it yeah. feels very freeing, doesn't it? Yeah, when, when and you, you grow from that as well, yeah. admitting when you're wrong. But anyway, that is it for another video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed watching this segment of Vlogmas. We've only got about a week left of these videos. We hope you are enjoying them. If you're new here, we'd love it if you subscribed. If you subscribed already, hit the bell so you know about all the other Vlogmas videos coming up for the rest of this series. But that is it, guys, and we will see you all in the next video. Just remember, though, no matter where you are in the world and whether the Christmas is the worst or the best, you guys always stay free. And just keep rising.